Hello everybody, welcome to another Junk Journal with me video. This is one, it's a little bit longer than usual and I'm just kind of filling up all the spare pages in my last journal because I was kind of ready to move on to the next one and I ended up having more pages than I thought I did to fill up so that's why we're, I think it's nearly 20 minutes long but anyways, I'm just starting here. I know I've showed this before but I do get asked a lot about printing my pictures because I think people see like the teeny tiny pictures I use in my junk journal and they always say hey, where do you print your pictures from and they may not have seen previous videos where I've uh, shared that so I'm just sharing it again I just print using my normal printer I print on A4 size I use glossy photo paper that I buy from Amazon it's not that expensive just print it at photo quality if you've got a half decent printer like even if it only costs 50 pound or so ones these days can usually print pretty decent photo quality and then I just collage them onto A4 and then print them off and that's that's all there is to it and as for a program that you can collage them on um, I use Photoshop but that's not necessary you can even do it in, in like Microsoft Office Word um, or I think you can do it on Canva which is a website uh, like a photo editing and collaging website I haven't actually done it on there but I think you can because you can do all sorts of sizes on, on that website. So yeah, there you go. That's what I do for my photos. Very simple, very cheap as well. Um, so yes, first off, I am, I've been saving this page in my journal. By the way, I'm sorry if you can hear background noises. There's men doing work outside, um, like the house next door, and I've been waiting for them to stop for days and they haven't, so we're just gonna have to put up with the noise, I'm afraid. Anyways, yes, I was saving this page in my journal because it's a map page of where I live um, in the southeast, and I was trying to save it for something like vaguely something to do with where I live and stuff. So I had these photos from, was it last week or the week before? I'm not sure, but basically my mum, my dad and I went out for the first time since March. We all know why. Um, and yeah, we just took some photos, um, we were still very safe with all masks and all that kind of thing, um, we went to this cafe that has a big outdoor area, very distanced from other people and stuff, because we're still being very, very careful as a family, but yeah, it was just so nice to be out, even if it was for a short period of time, we couldn't be out for long because of various reasons, and we just took a couple of photos, and it is, uh, basically this, it's a campsite that has a cafe on it, we do not camp, Grace doesn't camp, ugh, no thank you. Um, but it just has the most glorious views over over the English Channel and over to France. So you can just see the background of the sea and it looks so, so pretty. So I thought that would be perfect for using on that map page. As you saw, I did some background stamping. Um, the stamps I used there, they were either from uh, the Prima Saint-Tropez collection or they were just some cheap ones I got from the works. I ripped up some sort of nautical and sea themed washi to back my photos and some of the stickers I'm using are from Little Rainbow Moon. I don't think you can get that collection anymore. I'm, I'm not 100% sure but I don't think you can. And then I went in, I've got like a box of nautical themed things and I pulled out that journaling card and some scraps of paper, this seagull from Minte collection which I'm just going to fussy cut and I've just layered up those things, gone around the edges with the ink. The ink I'm using is either, is archival in cobalt or sepia, 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 whatever. I really love using blue and brown together of various different shades and you'll see this again in like a later spread. Oh my goodness, that hammering outside is really noisy. I'm so sorry if you can hear that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just, I love, uh, blue and brown do really go together sometimes, especially like turquoisey colours and brown, and yeah, as I said, I just like using them. Um, on that Prima journaling card, that's the one that says you are my anchor, I backed that with that thing that said Dreaming of the Sea, which was from Little Rainbow Moon, and because it had like a lot of space on it, that like it had the beautiful picture on it but I could still write over it so I started my journaling on that card and then continued it on the page as well I just really liked the way that writing looked over that sea themed background I just thought that looked quite cute and then I think that's going to be pretty much the last thing I do to these pages oh, I'm just going to add this little quote that says let the sea set you free or something I did rip it slightly wrong so the middle s is a little bit ripped off but Oh well, never mind. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for that page, I think. So yeah, I'm just going through to find like all the blank pages 
and stuff. I found this, I think this was the last, no, it's not the last double spread. It was the second to last double spread. But this spread is a really, really, really simple one. Oh no, wait, maybe I do four double page spreads in this video. You know what, I can't remember. This is what happens when workmen do stuff and I can't do my voiceover when I intend to and then I forget completely what I did when I did film the video. Not my fault whatsoever. Anyway, back on topic. So I have shared something similar before, um, uh, but I'll explain it again. A few years ago, my bestie got me to count how many washi tapes I had. And since then, I've kept just like a little memo pad or piece of a memo pad in one of my washi drawers. And every time I get new washi, I add it to that. So I have a running total of washi. And this little piece of paper here is the one where I finally reached on, what was the date? 24th of November, 2019, I finally reached 1000 washi tapes or rolls of washi tape. So I thought I would just document that because it's kind of funny. I have slowed down since then. This is my new little tab I'm keeping just on a piece of scrap paper. I just remembered I'd bought three and hadn't added those. So just quickly jotting that down. And all I did for the background of that was just add little like collaged all the new washi tapes I've got in the past couple of months. So I've just put those down. I tipped in that little piece of paper. I added some journaling. I'm adding a few washi theme stickers and that's about it for that spread. For this one, I just wanted to think of something random to fill the page really. And what I am doing a lot in this video is using some of my own printables from my Etsy shop because I have a really bad habit of forgetting to use stuff from my own shop. I know, it's really bad. I'm a very forgetful person. So um, I'm starting here. This is one of the printables from my uh, book covers printable set. And just in case you didn't know, um, my printables are available either as like a download, like in the normal way, or I do do them as a physical item as well for those who can't or won't print. So that is from the book covers set, the religious book covers. They're all like 18th and 19th century. So they're all pretty, pretty ancient, like the Book of Martyrs. I thought that just sounded appropriately dramatic. And I am just, I'd already written this quote down when I was testing out some new paper and new pens, but it's a quote by Desmond Tutu that says, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, then you have chosen the side of the oppressor. I think that's what that says, or very close to. I'm gonna accidentally get quite political in a couple of these spreads, three of them, I think. I'm not gonna like go overboard or anything, I'm just, but that's just the kind of person I am. So here, I just had a blank page. I'm just gonna do some collaging with some vintage pages and things like that. A pen pal had sent me this card that has Gandhi on and that famous Gandhi quote, you know, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. And on the reverse of it, there was like a little journal um, prompt that said something like, what person from history do you admire the most? Um, so I just kind of used that to, yeah, do some journaling on the subject. I started off talking about like Emmeline Pankhurst and the suffragettes and then basically went on to say, I just admire anyone from history who has stood up to oppression and injustice and bigotry and anything like that. So like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, French revolutionaries, you know, anyone like that. So that's what that kind of came about. And I have that book cover from my printables that says the whole duty of man as the title. I thought that can kind of work for this about, you know, that's what the duty of man is to stand up to oppressors and stuff like that. Again, not trying to get too political on you. That's just the kind of person I am. And then that little printable I added is actually, I made it into a sticker for myself. I haven't done these for the shop, but I can do if there's any interest, but it's from that same printable set. And it has something like, the names of the noblemen who arrived in England with William the Conqueror. And I just thought that would be like a funny thing to put with that because I'm kind of against peerage and noble, the idea of noblemen and stuff like that. So I thought that was like a funny little thing to put with it. Again, I'm sorry, I'm not like trying to preach at anyone. I'm just saying this is what I put in my journal. Anyway, this one's not political in the slightest, this double page spread. I actually nearly missed it because the two pages had stuck together with what I'd done on one of the other sides. And so I just came across this and went, ah, double page spread. The other side, as you saw, had some stamping that I'd done on the other side of it that I completely soaked through. So I needed to cover that up again using one of my printables. Um, this is from the Antique Handwritten set. And I just put the whole thing down. I put washi in the middle, but as you saw, a little bit on the wonky side, whoopsie. Thankfully, I'm not really bothered by things like that. 
I'm going around the edges of a lot of things as you may have noticed with vintage photo and this one ended up being another thing with the whole blue and brown theme that I just love to put together. I think it's because I like the whole brown thing because of vintage but blue is also my favourite colour so yeah. The journal card that says Embrace the Glorious was from a Prima Georgia Blues journal card set and I just put a line of uh, verse of poetry on that. That label is just from some clothes I bought a while ago and then as you saw I was picking some stickers from the Antiquarian sticker book which I'm sure many of you have heard of. I finally got it for myself after trying to avoid it for ages because it is about £20 and it's like a lot of money to spend on a sticker book but I just I gave in I got it I'm not going to link it because where I got it from doesn't have it anymore I got it from a third party seller on Amazon but just google antiquarian sticker book and you should be able to find somewhere where you are that sells it but yes just adding a random scrap of book paper that I found and then I did a little bit of stamping of this butterfly it's from AB studio the ink I used is I did write it down it's the memento dewdrops you know like the chalky inks in Aegean blue I think is how you say it I really love these inks like that chalky dense way they stamp it's just mm, mm, delicious I love it then for the other side, I was just going to layer up some blue washies. I just chose various blue washies. And then what I thought I'd do is this random little piece of paper. It is the same as the washi one, you are right. But basically the story behind this is the memo pad that that piece of paper is from, I bought in 2015. And maybe not at first, but at least for the past two years or so, I have used multiple of them a day. And it just lasted forever like I thought it was almost like a magical memo pad that never ran out but it did eventually the other day I used the final piece I well I didn't use the final piece I kept the final piece to like document in my journal this memo pad that has served me well for five years I know it might sound like a really random thing for journal but there we go I did annoyingly get a big ink splodge on that from what I had done on the second to last piece but anyways but I just thought that would be a fun little thing to journal on this spread so as you can see on the left side it's like the other part of that map um where I had done the first spread in this video and I was looking at it thinking what am I going to do on this I can't think of anything I haven't been to any of these places recently it's basically just down the coast from me and then I noticed there was Camber on this map, uh, Camber Sand, some of you may know it as, and I thought I'd have a little rant. <laughs> um, so I printed off a screenshot of a tweet um, and basically just had a rant on the, on the journaling side because the Camber thing prompted me a couple, about a month or so ago when we were still not supposed to be going out and doing things. Canberra has the most beautiful beach. It really is a lovely, lovely beach, but people were pouring down there in their thousands when we were still supposed to be social distancing and stuff. And it was like, for goodness sake, you selfish, selfish people. Canberra is a really, really small place. The beach may be big and beautiful, but the roads at one point were completely blocked that emergency service vehicles couldn't get to the beach. Like it was just bumper to bumper blocked for miles and miles. They had to close the I don't know if it's a town or village of Camber but anyway so I used that as a prompt I used as you saw random stickers washi the usual stuff had my little rant and there we go sometimes it's good to get it all off your chest and into your journal for this spread this is the very center of the journal and I decided I really wasn't fond of that paper that I had used so I was going to completely cover it up the paper there is from my, again, one of my printables from the handwritten um, set. Oh, and the postcard I used on the previous page is from my postcards printable set. So I added that on there. I am adding some vintage collage medium over the top. It's not absolutely necessary, but I just, I like the texture and the feel when you've used collage medium over something, even if it's not official collage medium, even if it's Mod Podge or PVA or something, it's just... Yeah, as a really tactile person, I love the texture of when that happens. Um, and then the other bits I'm using here are part of um, like the label or the cover sheet from the Kaisercraft Amethyst collection. It was just so pretty, I didn't want to throw away the label, so I'm adding that there. And I'm using Distress Oxide in Speckled Egg, the new colour, just to add around the edges and help kind of 
blend now those purpley tones into that brownish tone of the printable and I think that kind of works. I really had no idea what I wanted to do with this page though so I found this little file folder which is from the pink paisley cellar v collection very very old collection now and the colors of the front of it kind of worked um and i had this photo that i'd printed ready to use at some point it has a funny story behind the photo which i'm going to journal about in that little mini file folder i'm not going to explain the story because it's one of those things that isn't funny unless you know my family kind of thing or like one of those you had to be there things if i kind of explain it you're going to go and what why why what but yeah as i said it's one of those things like you, you have to be there you have to know my family to understand why it's funny anyway so that's what i put in there and then i've just found some random bits and scraps that's like that green stuff is from some sticker packaging i found this tag which i think was sent in some happy mail or something a long long time ago and i'm just collaging those and then pulling in a few of these little butterflies. I bought a load of these kind of old school crafting butterflies. They're the ones where like they're all connected together by little bits and you just cut them up and they're really really thin like not quite decoupage paper but not like thick as paper paper at the same time. I did link them in a previous video. I'll see if I can try and find the same link but yes just added a few of those. And then finally, we come to an end at some point, I thought for the last pages, well the front and end pages, oh please stop drilling outside, it's so noisy. Um, I wouldn't do anything too significant, I would just do some collaging. So I have a little folder where when I've done collaging for other projects, I obviously have scraps and leftovers of tissue paper, collage paper, napkins, etc. So I put them all in one little folder so I can use them for things like this. So. The thing that says London is from some Prima tissue paper and I added some washi in the book page and then this from my uh, library tickets printables that says something like the War Office and the Secretary of State's Library which I just think is kind of cool so I thought I'd uh, just decoupage that onto there as well. And then I'm doing pretty much the same thing on the front cover, those scraps of tissue paper are from that same Prima tissue paper and again I'm using the vintage collage medium which has that kind of tea dye tint to it and then again I'm going to add like a piece of book paper and another one of my printables from that same library tickets collection this one that says withdrawn from stock I thought that might be kind of funny to have at the front of my junk journal I don't really know why but that's what I used but once that was down, I was having one of those moments of, mm, I am not happy, there needs to be something else here. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of simple stenciling. That sort of damasky Baroque stencil is from Hobbylicious, and I'm just doing some stenciling straight down on it with some Distress Oxide in... I think it's vintage photo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's vintage photo. And then I went to the back to do that as well, because I seem to have started doing this in my journals, making like the front and back pages quite similar to each other almost like a mirror of each other so that's why I went and did it on the back page as well and I am pretty sure apart from oh no I'm going to add a little bit of the ink around the edges of those pages just to make them look a little bit more vintagey and antique and old and stuff and then I think that is it for this video so that is that journal complete so next video I will be starting a new one obviously whether I make it in the next video or not I don't know because I haven't quite decided what I'm doing about my next journal um, but anyways yes thank you so so much for watching links uh, relevant links will be down in the description box if I can find them um, stuff that I've mentioned in my shop obviously inks and that some stuff is hard for me to link if I got it a long time ago or something like that uh, links to tools and stuff are usually in my Amazon storefront. I think that's what you call it. So if there's something I use that you were like, oh, I like those scissors or I don't know, something like that, then it may be linked in there. Anyway, that is quite enough from me. Thank you so, so much for watching this kind of long junk journal video, at least for me. Uh, please leave me a thumbs up chat to me down in the comments because it really really helps me out even if you just drop an emoji or two it's really really helpful and i really really appreciate it yep okay very much going now thank you so much again Bye bye